Peggy 16. Hi guys, Ricky Martin here and welcome back to our behind the scenes journey of 11.11 Memories Retold. Today's episode is all about story. Our writers reveal what to expect from the characters and name drop key locations. Also, we get to hear from one of the historians the team collaborated with to help keep the game faithfully grounded in the period it's set. This is 11.11 Memories Retold, behind the scenes. My name's uh, Professor Peter Doyle. I'm a visiting professor in history at the University in London. So the game starts at the end of 1916. We've seen massive battles which saw and expended huge numbers of men, and that's the focus of this game, the whole of this period after the end of these titanic battles and towards the end of the war. Where do we get to go? We, you start off in like a Toronto, in like a photography yeah, store. Toronto, Germany. You get to get, there's a Zeppelin factory, there's, we, we go to Battle of Vimy and the Battle of Passchendaele. When we came on board, the core aspects were in place, the two characters, the animals, but there was a lot, a lot of story and a lot of things that Digix Art wanted to get into the game. So to begin with, it was yeah. our role to make sense of all of that. For us, it was story first and it was, you know, as long as we make a, a strong character-driven story, and use the war as a backdrop rather than make it about the war. It's sort of that was our focus. And you play two characters, two protagonists, Harry and Kurt. This story charts their progress through two years at the end of the war and how their lives intertwine. Yeah, so Harry, my character, comes from Toronto. He joins the war effort, um, sort of in an effort to seem like a hero to his this woman that he loves back home, uh, this woman named Julia and uh, not really understanding what he's getting himself into. There's, there's a scenario that, that puts him with, in, in, a, in a cave, essentially, uh, outside of the front lines, stuck, and he finds himself with a German named Kurt. Kurt is older. Um, their relationship is, you know, tenuous initially. They, they can't communicate uh, at all. I love that about the game as well. The you know the the German character is speaking in German, and, and Harry is trying to communicate with him in English, and and you know initially it's kind of faulty. Harry and Kurt, both of them are going to the front for very very different reasons, but they have something in common. How they feel about taking the life of someone else, this is something for them that they cannot imagine. But basically, they will face their own moral limits. What do they believe in? Do they believe more in the, their nations or do they believe more in, in their humanity? Uh, this is one of the, 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 the strong aspects of the game and the questions that we want the player to feel. So uh, myself and my colleague Robin Schaefer, German military historian, we wrote this book called Fritz and Tommy. And the idea behind that was to look at the First World War experiences of the Germans and the British and to see their everyday lives. And one thing that we identified was just how close those guys were. What we've gleaned from all of the letters and diaries is there comes a point where there is a lull in the fighting and there's a reason for that. The men of both sides decide, right, let's put the fighting aside, let's go into no man's land, let's do what we can for our dead and let's respect those on each other. And that happens on an ad hoc basis. You just never know when that's gonna happen. Sometimes it's official, sometimes it's unofficial. And so there were these impromptu communications. Again, it goes back to the real feature that men are men wherever they are and peace is mostly in their hearts, one would hope. So you'll notice that there are no villains in this game. Um, each of the characters that you think may be a villain will hopefully have a redeeming arc somewhere. Uh, especially when you're dealing with a subject matter like war. To talk about things in terms of good and bad and right and wrong, it just, it just feels so absolutely wrong. We just wanted to write everybody is very, very human and everything is just shades of morally grey. It's up to the player to kind of decide what they think is best in, in any given uh, situation. There's real opportunity for there to be an emotional response. Um, this inherently has that built into the fabric of the storytelling by the very nature of the fact that it takes place during such an intense time in our history and they've chosen to zero in on one side and the other side, but humanizing those two sides um, so that we can relate to both of them and their own experiences without it being this or that or this is the enemy, this is not the enemy. Um, and I think that will be really powerful. <laughs> 